Hello friends, my name is Dr. Lee Singhal and today I am going to present a case with hypermature cataract and you can see this patient is having hypermature cataract. He presented with like a high IOP, a kind of equilitic scenario and uh, after giving a few pressure lowering medications, we have taken this patient for surgery under topical anesthesia and uh, as you can see that after getting this main port and side port entry done, I am trying capsulorexis and this is my preferred technique. What I call this pressure capsulorexis. Why pressure? Because I am using a 26 gauge cannula attached with 2 cc uh, visco, dispersive viscoelastic, where I am pressing my left thumb and negotiating the internal lenticular pressure by this visco dispersive viscoelastic material. So I am maintaining entry chamber, I am pressurizing entry chamber and that's why I named this technique a pressure capsule excess and uh, I started this capsule excess with 26 gauge bent needle and uh, finishing with healthy precursor forcep. As capsule is like uh, quite fragile and at uh, many of the places it's fibrose, zonules are quite weak in these kind of patients and we have to be very much careful while doing capsule excess and my target capsule excess is around 5, 5.5 millimeter. So there's hardly any cortical matter so it's uh, nucleus only into the bag and uh, so there is no need of hydro procedure and you can see that this this nucleus is quite slippery and this is hard nucleus and it's slippery as well so one have to be very careful before engaging the nucleus into the phaco probe so i've just engaged that started an initial crack i have not gone for like full crack full separation of the nucleus fragment because in these kind of hard cataract and these slippery nucleuses, I, I do just make a partial crack. I don't separate posterior plate. I remove endonucleus first. So I'm using posterior plate as a scaffold to prevent posterior capsular tear. So I'm separating endonucleus kind of like a onion pill. So I'm just going and burying my phaco probe deeper into the nucleus and then at the same time going to the periphery cracking the nucleus and then after getting a partial crack I am separating endonucleus from the epinucleus so this is my technique of debulking the nucleus and creating a kind of like bowl or a cavity into the center of the nucleus so after removing all of the endonucleus, now I am going to the periphery and now it's time for petals like this epinucleus petal what I have created a kind of flower like so I am separating these petals one by one and separating from the posterior plate. Now it's very easy to separate these petals from the posterior plate as nucleus is hardly having any bulk. So and now emulsifying them one by one. To my surprise this patient is having like lot of milky fluid into the vitreous and uh, I am like little bit puzzled so what to do with this leaky milky fluid and uh, one thing is like maybe late after putting oil I can like later on do yak cap or I can refer this patient to my veterinary colleague for pars like I don't know what to do at this stage and uh, because I have seen in many patients but uh, those were like little leak and this patient is having like quite a big leak into the posterior cavity into the vitreous and before coming out from the entry chamber I am just again injecting viscoelastic metal into the entry chamber and to prevent collapse and now time for IL implantation. So this is hydrophobic single piece IL I am implanting in this patient and into the bag and little bit of hydro procedures. But again I am thinking about is the surgery complete or I can do anything else for this patient. So going behind the IL, removing extra visco. As there are hardly any cortical matter, 
so I'm just sealing the main port and side port again is this surgery complete or I can do anything extra at this stage it's an open question to all thank you